At 1 p.m. HST, I know where I will be. Ukulele Underground Podcast for you and me. Aldrin and Erin and Kahai. And maybe Magic Mike or a guest on the fly. Ukulele Underground Podcast. Now here's the guys. Here's the guys. Here's the guys. A round of applause for Rob. Yeah, that was Rob. Very own Rob doing our intro music for this week. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Ukulele Underground Podcast. My name is Aldrin Guerrero, joined by Mr. Aaron, the voice now commercial. What's up, Aaron? What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend. Fergan, say what's up, Kahai? What's up? We're all here. All the boys are here. Here's the guys. Uh, like right, like Rob said, you know, we are here, here, here we are. Um, this podcast basically deals with the ukulele and just things ukulele related, sometimes non-ukulele related. We just kind of talk music, uh, talk pop culture, whatever it may be. Uh, we just have a nice cool conversation all right and uh, we get questions in we ask um, uh, people ask us questions we answer them as best as we can well i try to um and then the other two guys will come in with their two cents and then we give you a uh, six cent answer right guys <laughs> <laughs> a nickel and a penny answer kahai it's yeah, maybe rounded down to a nickel yeah just, just a nickel. <laughs> yeah sometimes you know sometimes not quite two cents yeah but we try our best um like like we said something we mostly talk about ukulele but sometimes we don't and you know that's it's it's okay <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's all right but yeah um last week we left off on a cliffhanger so our cliffhanger question last week was kahai uh yeah it was from a young viewer uh yeah the up and comer you know yeah yeah uh uh eldrian eldrian l l and Nildla. Yeah. <laughs> and Adrian, I think. Adrian. Adrian. I, I think you would get along with this guy because he oh, like for his user, like mm. his username picture, he has like the picture of like the cross the crossbones and the, oh, the, the straw that. hat. Oh, oh yeah. like a straw hat pirate. Wow. So. Adrian. Um so Adrian asks <laughs> yeah. what does he ask? Uh what comes first in songwriting? Melody or chords? What is more important? All right, so very, very, very interesting because, and the reason why I say it's interesting is because it's just like a chicken and egg situation, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it really um, boils down to that as a chicken and egg, you know, like um, <laughs> the egg comes first, the, the chicken hatches from the egg, but then, what, you know, what hatches the chicken is one of those things. So it really depends on what comes to you first, and I know that's like the most generic um, answer that I, that I could give, but we're going to dive down into it, right? So whatever inspiration hits you you basically follow down that rabbit hole if you're a songwriter if you're an ukulele songwriter if you're a um, lyrical songwriter whatever it may be um i remember a story you know uh, that's i believe it was paul mccartney who uh, you know who who wrote you know um yesterday when uh, when he wrote yesterday uh, he was thinking of the words scrambled eggs, right? Have you guys heard that story? Scrambled oh, yeah, eggs. <laughs> so, and like a scrambled eggs was like what, you know, what he had like stuck in, stuck in his mind. Scrambled eggs. And he's just like, I just really like that melody line. Like he, he said it was kind of haunting him for a little bit. Like, da -da -da, and he didn't have anything. He just had scrambled eggs. So if he had followed down the rabbit hole of, uh, of getting like the lyrics of scrambled eggs, then we would have had a completely different song. But he stuck with that melody line. He had that melody and da -da -da. and then from there, <clears throat> because he followed down the rabbit hole you know, da, 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 and uh, hopefully we don't get copyright strikes for uh, for <laughs> humming a Beatles song but with uh, with with that said it's kind of like and you can see how it's both kind of the melody and the chord because the melody will come you know like with la da 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 da, da. but with that the chord there is an e7 chord la, la, da, da. La, da, 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 da. It's not something that you normally go to, you know, like an E7 chord is not necessarily in the uh, C chord family. It's a little bit outside. It's a cousin, you know, if, if you would, uh, of, of the C chord family. And um, 
it's just a really cool thread to to follow so whatever inspiration hits you first you're just gonna have to go um follow whatever rabbit hole that takes you down but there are people who prefer one to the other and i you know i prefer melody lines but i've you know i don't want to say that i've never written a song um that you know that didn't come to me as uh, as chords first because that's happened as well i've t told that story here of uh, of chocolate fontaines that song that i recently wrote i just really like that chord progression of f to a minor to the d7 yeah i really like that sound and i went with it you know i basically went with uh, writing that entire song based on that but um most of the time i'll have something like And I just kind of follow that thought and that's where it goes. That entire song was was based on that. I remember being at the uh, at, at the tennis court with uh, with a bunch of my friends and my friend's name is Tyler. And um my friend Bradford who is actually the designer of uh, of the Ukulele Underground logo. Uh Bradford is he he designed the Ukulele Underground logo. He also designed the original Bandido Tyler sticker, the Bandido Tyler album. He did all that stuff. And um we were playing tennis and he had this plain white shirt and it had bandito tyler in it mm -hmm. and i was like what the heck is that <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is that thing and it, the legend of bandito tyler began there and he and he just like i don't know he's, he's like i was having fun in art class and we had to make stencils uh -huh. so he made the stencil of the original bandito tyler stencil and like he just got a white t-shirt he like he spray painted it on and <laughs> since he was just like a regular white t-shirt he used it for tennis uh -huh. and i'm like that is amazing. And he's like, oh, uh, all he needs now is a theme song. I'm like, I got it. I got it. <laughs> so it's got to be something like like nice and catchy. Like, boom, dun, 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 something snappy. And that's what came in me first. Boom. And that's why that song starts that way. Like, uh -huh. honestly, that's why that song Because there was starts. nothing else. There's nothing else. <laughs> yeah. All I had was boom. Because I bring my ukulele to to the tennis course. We're we're not good tennis players. I I should say that right off the bat. We're not great tennis players. So that's why I bring my ukulele to the tennis court. Because I'm like I'm done sucking at this game. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sit down and uh, and do something that I suck less at. You know, and um when you know when I was kind of sitting down and working you know working out that tune uh, and I was like it needs like something kind of grand right after the and that. And it's just the notes that came there. And I'm like, why don't I just... Oh, like, that sounds super cool. <laughs> and even then, like, I don't know what, you know, what, what key was going to be in or whatever. It's just I followed down that rabbit hole of, like, whatever the uh, the main melody was. So it can come both ways. It's a chicken and egg situation. But whatever comes to you first, follow that. Um, some people have preference. I have a melody line preference because I... When I write my songs, it's always like, can somebody hum this back to me? You know, like uh, it. That's my indication of a good instrumental song is if the audience can hum it back to me, or if they can remember what the main melody was when they go home. That means I've made an, enough of an impact that uh, that they remember whatever three, four, five notes that I've played in sequence um, that would uh, basically be my song. Yeah, and that's. I think the goal of of most, I should say most, not maybe not every songwriter, but most songwriters, is just to have an impact on their, you know, on their audience. You know, it's it's art, really. Like, what does your art say? So my art, I I wanted to say something. I want to mean something. So, uh, kind of diving a little bit deeper to uh, to writing with melody. The melodies that I write, this is just a kind of a personal thing. It not only should be catchy but it should also paint a mental picture when i'm writing a song especially an instrumental writing a song with lyrics and stuff it's a little bit easier to paint a picture you know but you can you can be really clever with it and stuff like aaron's really clever with his you know with his uh lyrics and he's got like um like uh like hidden things about hidden things and, and you know and meanings about meanings and stuff but instrumental it's really cool because it's basically like um like an abstract painting it, it can be interpreted however you want to interpret it yeah and uh with the melody lines that i make instead of it being completely abstract and just kind of like taking oh man this chord sounds cool and then i do one of these and then this or whatever you know like which that's cool too there's a certain you know like audience or something like that but for me 
I grew up listening to things like video games and um, and big fighting robots on TV with with anime and stuff. And every single thing that happens in video games and TV has a sound to it. And um, all my favorite songs back, uh, instrumental songs back then were you know were things that like uh, that that had a visual attached to it yeah so when uh, when i'm listening to those um if, if i'm just listening to a soundtrack i can see what's going on and i want to be able to do the same thing and write the same songs because that had an impact on me so that's kind of what encourages me and inspires me to write the same exact way um you know when when growing up uh voltus 5 uh voltron and things like that like whenever voltron like um connects together there's a there's a song that goes with it mm -hmm. or if, you know if you guys remember sailor moon whenever they do the sailor moon change or whatever <laughs> uh, there's a song that goes with that yeah. everything there's a you know there's a soundtrack to everything or if uh for for you know a little bit more uh, reference that people understand a little bit more what darth vader from star wars walks in the room you're gonna hear Dun 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 dun. dun. So it's always the main melody line because if you ask me what the chords are to that song, I'd be like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know like, I don't know. But um, some people do, you know, get the chords first because how are you gonna get that melody if you, you know, if you don't have chords? It's a chicken and egg situation. But for some people, one just comes easier than the other. And uh, yeah, that's I'm, I'm very passionate about this. Thank you, Adrian, for your question. <laughs> yeah. I, I love this topic. How about so, you guys? So what is the what is the question then? Like, is it when you're writing a song, what comes yeah, first? Yeah, what comes first? Or yeah. is it what is more important? Oh, okay. well, I, think, so, mm -hmm. I, I think that was the first part of the question was what comes first. And mm -hmm. then uh, the second part was, is what's more important. Yeah. Right? And I think yeah. that what's more important depends on the songwriter and what they're, you know, and what they're doing. So whatever inspires them first, what's, what's important is whatever hits you first, whatever inspires you to keep or to start writing, you know, to, to, to begin with. And I think that's more important. It's just finding the inspiration. And once inspiration hits, just go down that same rabbit hole. Um, important though, if, uh, if I were to, you know, to put an importance to it. I think melody definitely trumps over um, over <clears throat> over chords, but it depends too because like some really great songs do not have melody in it at all. Like it's just it's just chords. You know, like think of um, a lot of uh, like ambiance kind of uh, you know kind of music in, in your favorite movies. Like there's not like melody lines that are playing. Um, I'm gonna get really dorky, but. If you ever played Monster Hunter, and I know uh, Kai <laughs> has played Monster Hunter on the, on the PlayStation, what's you know they have the, the the main theme song, which is da 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 da. But when you're hunting, it's just ambiance. There's just some chords and stuff like playing in the background. There's really nothing. But when uh, and those can be just as impactful. Okay, um, it, you know it, some some chord progressions really stand out um let's see have you guys ever seen that movie um forgetting sarah marshall uh yeah i don't remember okay. it though <laughs> yeah so forgetting sarah marshall um jason uh what is i forgot his last name but the main guy um <laughs> his his job was he uh or, or sarah marshall was a uh was was a lead or leading lady in uh in this kind of like uh crimes like a csi kind of tv show and um and jason siegel his character is he's the music guy who writes the music for that show yeah and um there's a scene where he's like uh where he's doing the music for the show mm -hmm. and um and the guys will just kind of play the play the scene and he, he's there with his keyboard like trying to you know like match stuff with it mm -hmm. and they're like uh <laughs> he's trying to figure stuff out but he can't but it's just really ominous sounding chords and that's like the uh, you know that's the that's the theme of that um you know of, of that tv show just really kind of ominous sound he's like we're, we're looking for more dark and ominous and then i think after that that breakup because forgetting sarah marshall is a spoiler for those people who haven't seen it it's about them breaking up and um and and jason siegel's like kind of like depressed and stuff he started like when he's doing the uh that scene he starts playing the the, uh, the theme from like frazier you know like, oh, is it frazier or it's, is that baseline <laughs> seinfeld is seinfeld or frazier 
Seinfeld? I think it's Seinfeld. <laughs> he's doing that like baseline. He's like, um, let's just stick to the dark and ominous. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you want dark and ominous? How about this? And then he just starts like ruining everything. But yeah, my point is that um, those kind of themes, there's no, you know, there's no real melody line to it. But, you know, it's it's still like counts as like nice songs there's a lot of great like jazz songs that are just really beautiful chord progressions and then you just solo over it you know like um the the ever so famous giant steps is just two five a bunch of two five ones and a bunch of different ever-changing keys and those are just that's a entire song based on chords and chord progression so it really depends you can make a great song with just chords but as far as more important it's really in the eye of the beholder yeah i think yeah it like and i think people would even be surprised mm-hmm. how much movies or media they uh mm-hmm. watch and they might not necessarily even remember the music but if you mm-hmm. take out the music from that you know like horror movies are yeah. famous for mm-hmm. uh you know some people are like oh that's not even music that's just like you know they make weird like uh thrilling yeah. sounds like nah 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 yeah. right <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah so those are all just chords. <laughs> but, but I think somebody did do like a cut where they took out all the mm. music or all the background sounds to a horror movie, mm. and how much less scary it is. Like, there's no build up. You just see a guy pop out, and then you yeah. know it's like, oh, okay, and yeah, like, I guess <laughs> yeah. that happens. But yeah. so like it, and, and you know those things. It, again, if you ask somebody like, oh, can you tell them a melody back to me or something? Those don't really have melodies. Mm. Uh, and that's not really the purpose, but mm. they serve a purpose of like adding to the atmosphere. It's not something that you recognize or you mm. really latch on to, but you, it's like something that you just kind of feel in your gut, right? Like, yeah. it's like oh, something it serves a purpose. Yeah. Something's mm. wrong is happening or mm. stuff, stuff. So it depends on what you're going for, I guess. Like, mm. what is your meter of success? You yeah. want people to remember your song. If you want people to remember and like have a hook and like, oh, I really like that song. I can hum it back. Mm-hmm. Then you probably want a stronger melody. Mm-hmm. But if you want something where like people can like lo-fi hip hop, right? It's like mm-hmm. maybe you don't necessarily need a melody mm-hmm. to drive people because people who are listening to it, you know, like they say lo-fi, mel- uh, lo-fi hip hop for uh, studying, studying and relaxing. Jam. So you don't want something to be like standing out in your head. You just want like, oh, I just want to listen to like Mm -hmm. somebody play backing chords or whatever. So it really depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Aaron? Oh, yeah. Just personally, it's it's always most of the time chords come to me Mm -hmm. when writing a song. Mm -hmm. And um, but then from the chords, I have to come up with a hummable melody Mm -hmm that matches with the chords mm-hmm. or whatever yeah so i i just i end up humming along whatever i think it should sound like you Based know over the chords, over yeah. the chords mm-hmm. yeah like a melody line that would match over those chords or the direction go, goes in the direction that the chords are going in mm-hmm. and then um for lyrics i just end up singing whatever that melody line wants me to sing (laughs) yeah Yeah, usually words just tumble out and sometimes Mm -hmm. it's like that scrambled eggs yeah yeah. (laughs) where it's uh, nonsensical (laughs) but then sometimes um well most of the time usually the chords make me feel a certain way and it reminds Mm. me of a something that is brings that, up a memory yeah, of some yeah, yeah, sort yeah. and then i i follow the rabbit uh, you know follow that thread go yeah. down the rabbit hole uh based off of that mm. it reminds me of a situation or something that mm. happened to me or something that i saw like happened mm-hmm. to someone else and then i i use that as the basis of the lyrics most mm-hmm. of the time and then and once you get going it, like yeah i think songwriting itself is a practice in letting go so ah, yeah, yeah. you know so like you just say like i'm i'm not really controlling this yeah. it's whatever comes up yeah. and then as the more that you are able to let go the faster it comes out mm. and the mm. more you try to force it the less <laughs> that it comes out so come on i need something here yeah i need something now <laughs> I need something now here this part that's I, missing the one thing <laughs> yeah 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 uh, i was gonna say i think i, I struggle with this and I, I i'm trying to get better but i think people who you know they they try to write for either our songwriting stuff or just on their own. And there's like some people who are like, oh, I, I seem to like write a little bit, but then I get stuck and then I just can't move on from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really is like, 
it's hard, but you can't really keep things. You can't. Uh, I think the best way to songwrite and to get over those hurdles is to not make things so precious, right? Mm-hmm. It's like if you come up with a melody and then you're just like, I gotta make the rest of the song around this melody and I gotta make chords that fit into this melody, you know? Like a lot of times I'll, I'll come up with a part of a song and I, I'll come up with, you know, say I come up with the chords and then I come up with melody over it. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just like, how do I continue from this? It's only, this is only like a chorus or a verse. How do I make the other part of mm-hmm. the song, right? And nothing's coming up. Then I'm just like, I can't just like sit here and say, I got to keep going with this song, <laughs> yeah. right? Maybe I got to just like start over, come up with a new melody mm-hmm. or take out the chords from that melody that I had mm-hmm. and try new chords and yeah. see what comes up from there. And then because it, it really is like you can mix and match. Don't don't think that once you have a melody set in stone, I mean, you can. But once you have it set in stone, like, you know, like maybe save it or put it off for somewhere else and say, like, Maybe I'll come back to it, but it doesn't need to be yeah, if this not, particular it's okay. song. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't know what, what's going to come up next, right? So yeah. it is kind of like just that what Aaron was saying is like that uh, it, practice of like you're just trying to get stuff out of your head. Mm-hmm. And whatever makes more things come out, that's the path you should take. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes. You, know? like, yeah. <laughs> you come up with an even better song. You know? like, yeah. yeah. And that happens like pretty often, you know, like I, uh, I, I, I get you, Kahai, because um, there's a bunch of songs that I've like given up on. Yeah, you know? yeah like, scrap because it. Because it's just like, ah, oh, this isn't, this isn't working. Now. I feel like I'm forcing it. You know, like how yeah, you yeah. were saying too, yeah. Aaron. And it's just like, yeah, I don't want to feel like I'm forcing it. I'll just put it away. And then I, I come back to it and it becomes something better, you know, like mm-hmm. um, either I continue on with whatever it was and, and like the inspiration strikes me to uh, to to keep writing that song or I just take elements like you were saying Kahai, from it and completely build something new. And that's usually how I do all my all my albums I have on my phone. If if this, you know, mm-hmm. my phone is very, very, very precious to me because of it has all my ideas on it. <laughs> I would not know what to do if I lost my ideas. Um, and I think I've said this a lot before in, in the past on this show. Um, every time I get like a, like a melody line, if I have my ukulele with me, I'd like just take the um, the voice memo like uh, app and I would just kind of like do the little like uh, ditty that, you know, that came in my mind. Or if if I don't have my ukulele, I just la 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 it or whatever, do do do, you know? And um, yeah, and, and I think once you know, once it comes to me, I don't want to lose it, so I record it. And I'm just like, oh, I'll come back to it if I need something. And I'm writing a song, and I go through like my catalog of like little tiny, you know, like yeah. little tiny ditties and stuff that that have uh, that have recorded. And I'm like, oh man, okay, this sounds really good with this because this kind of sounds like it's it's telling the same story or whatever it may be, you know. Like, um, yeah, that's. It's fun. Songwriting is fun. You yeah. get should definitely if you ha- if you haven't tried writing a song on your ukulele, you owe it to yourself to like express yourself musically through your through your ukulele. Yeah. Don't and I, I think like when we're saying like <laughs> if something's not working out with yeah. whatever you came up with, yeah. Like throw it away. Don't throw it away. Just like put it off to throw the side. side. Yeah. yeah. Save it because you never know when you're gonna come back to mm-hmm. it. And there's a um Andrew Huang, like on YouTube. Mm-hmm. He did like a thing. <laughs> I think he had a website called Songs to Wear Pants to or something. <laughs> something like that. Where he would basically like if you needed a song, you mm. could ask him, like write a description of a song and he mm. would write it for you. Mm. And he was like putting out I think if you look on I don't know if Spotify or wherever he has his songs, he has like a bunch of albums that are, you know, instrumentals, mm. vocals, all all different types. And he just like pumps them out, right? But yeah. he like yeah, he was saying that people shouldn't be ashamed to... We have this feeling like, I'm giving up on this thing. And you kind of feel guilt or shame. But people shouldn't feel ashamed of giving up on songs and having like half-finished projects. Like if you, if that means that you're working on something else, you know, and you're constantly working on it. And mm-hmm. you, and he said like, you can come back to it, you know, like you can... He does that, like sometimes he'll put up folders with of his song titles, right? And it's just like one was like um, mm-hmm. Adventure Time and mm-hmm. then like a song in there that people wanted him to finish was like 
blippity bloop. And so he's like, <laughs> okay, yep, I'm going to click on blippity bloop. <laughs> I haven't opened this project for seven years. Let's see yeah. what I did. And he's like, man, this is really weird, but I dig it now and I can finish it now. Yeah. So like, yeah, you never know like uh, yeah. when you can go back to it. Or if you, don't, you never do go back to it, don't feel bad for mm -hmm. like, you know, moving on. It's just, yeah. it, it really is like whatever you can get to, you know, you, Jim kind of put out a point. He said, uh, uh, like the don't be precious. Uh, I know a young lady who writes very good songs, record and releases, but takes two to three years to write a song. Mm -hmm. And another who constantly posts a song he is working on every week for one to two years at various stages. Mm -hmm. His are awful. Hers are excellent. <laughs> uh, and it, it is like, uh, yeah, maybe you don't want to be throwing away songs so much where it's mm -hmm. just like, as soon as you hit a roadblock, you just give up on it. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, if nothing is coming out, if you're trying, if it feels like you're forcing it, yeah. forcing force it. the creative process to happen, mm -hmm. it's like, maybe it is time to just like try, just try from a blank uh, slate, right? Yeah. Try from something brand new. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Go high. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I wanted to, <laughs> like, uh, Azrin Hamsini's dad. Yeah. Yeah. He he brought up a good point too, yes. where he said that. I saw that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In India, I think mm -hmm. he, he said that they don't really have the concept of harmony, so their mm -hmm. songs are very melody driven. Mm -hmm. And he said that it's interesting to see. It would be interesting to see how different countries what they prioritize mm -hmm. leads you know uh their next generations of musicians to, into creating so mm -hmm. i think that really is like probably for us right like we grew up in uh, hawaii mm -hmm. we're probably more comfortable with like uh things that we hear from like hawaiian vamps and stuff right yeah that isn't used in other genres of music but like yeah. for us is like oh yeah you can just put just put the seven there like the, just <laughs> this if you want to get to that chord just put a se seven in front of it you know yeah or something and i mean it's the same thing like uh the the, the songs and the chords that i write with and stuff are the songs that you know i grew up with and the chords that i grew up with listening to like how creative boys are this those are the you know chord uh progressions that i'm gonna go to but some you know someone who's been exposed to a lot of like maybe jazz music when they were younger like that's you know that's what they'll uh head towards they'll head towards more of those kind of complex chord um chord progressions it just really depends on what you're exposed to so interesting that in, in india they don't have uh they don't have harmony because that's just going to be purely like melody driven and yeah, yeah. everything I, I told him, like, it mm -hmm. seems like, and it seems like Hamsini's uh, songs are very melody driven first, right? That was like so. one of our, you know, one of our biggest um, uh, feedbacks uh, for her is that like when, when she writes stuff, it's always very melodic. Like she's got mm -hmm. like a, you know, like a main melody thing down, which mm -hmm. is just really, really, really cool and interesting because uh, most people, and I even say this, you know, when people are, are doing the, or when when we issue out the challenge like you can just be chords you can just play chords and you can just write a bunch of like chord progression and use that for your song and whatnot but you know someone like her she's like no there's gonna be this and that's the that's the song and the melody mm -hmm. goes like this like, that's pretty advanced <laughs> like good yeah. job yeah so like uh mm -hmm. i i think the way that i like to think of uh melody and harmony too is like melody is like the outlines for a painting right mm -hmm. you get the like a very clear picture if you have a good melody mm -hmm. and then harmony is like what colors you use to like fill mm -hmm. in those outlines yeah so you can go that's why you can go both ways right you can start up a, a picture mm -hmm. with the colors already laid down and then just draw lines around it you know that mm -hmm. that fit into those colors or you can have the outline down the the lines and then you've just kind of color in, you know, whatever color you feel like, oh, mm -hmm. I want that color. I want that note to really have like, uh, you know, just an example is like, oh, that mm -hmm. that note is B flat. I want a B flat major chord underneath mm -hmm. it. Right. Mm -hmm. Or something like that where you can just do that. And that's where like you can even take it. Uh, jazz people might take it a step for further and see that and be like, well, let's like kind of change the hue of the color let's yeah. make it like you know instead of uh, just a b flat major let's change it to a different chord 
together. It's like point. cerulean blue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not just crimson plain, red. Plain, whatever, yeah. You know, like. So, so, so what you're saying, you know, like uh, how instrumentals are like abstract paintings and you don't really have like a defined thing. Yeah. It's like it can get, go even further, right? Where it's yeah. just like, wow, there's just like colors up there and I don't know what to look at. And that can that's like really crazy mm-hmm. experimental music that you can try listening to. Yeah. But uh, it's up to you what you want to like make me get out of. Right? That, that's why guys like Jacob Collier are like painting with some amazing hues because it's like, how, how how are you doing that? <laughs> how are you making that color? Like, it's like, oh, it's just tuned down like by a half whatever semitone. It's like, that is insane. Like, why? Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, that it, he it's like uh, it's like the person, right? Mm-hmm. Who they said like can see more depths of color yeah. than most people can perceive. It mm-hmm. seems like he has that mm-hmm. that perception mm-hmm. of music is like really people can't hear this mm-hmm. tonal change, but for him it's important to add that in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. To translate the feeling mm-hmm. that that he's trying to convey. Mm-hmm. All right, so spent a good amount of time on that. Now, hi, are there any questions from the audience or from emails? Uh I think so I know we had one. Uh, Marama asked, "Hey guys, can you you recommend a song for me to practice a percussive knock?" A percussive knock? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if she's talking about what is that? Golpe? Yeah, like a golpe. Um, I'm not the person to ask, but <laughs> I mean, I mean it, can... it, it's one of those where like if if you're using the t- the technique, yeah, you should probably have a. An example an, of an it, idea <laughs> like, of what what yeah. song you can put it in. Because then, because why would you learn that technique if not? I guess so. Yeah, right. Yeah, you would. <laughs> that's that's a great way of putting it. Like, if you're learning a technique, you kind of have to um, have you know, some kind of con- something context. In, in, in context. Yeah. yeah, and and I always tell this to people who just watch like one on one. You know, like I watched Ukulele 101 and 102. Like now, what do I do? It's like, well, you're supposed to watch Ukulele 101 and 102 and do songs at the same time. So whatever you're learning in Ukulele 101, like you know, that's you can kind of see that in the songs and like songs mm-hmm. made easy or whatever. Like if you're working on a song, you're using Ukulele 101 to kind of be like, ah, okay, well that explains that, and and so you can kind of see it in context if you're if you're doing songs, and um, that that whole like doing ukulele 101 and 102 is kind of just like reading a book on swimming we're like okay cool this is how you do the slide now next and that's how you do the pull off or whatever but if you're not using those in context of a song like if um if you're just like "Eh." oh like you can you know you can just bend notes like that's (laughs) that's fun so if ever that should ever come up on any song you know how to do it or whatever which is totally fine but it's a lot better if you um you know if you match it with something in some kind of uh song that it makes sense to so you can see it in context yeah um but that kind of gold pit thing uh, there's a reason why craig did it is because i i wouldn't know really where to where to add something like that but (laughs) you can um can't do anything really like if you're good enough with with rhythm and you feel confident enough in the technique like um um if i were to do um like for example something like that you yeah, know like yeah. where i just replace where the chunks are and i just kind of add the uh the gold pin in there which is for those people wondering i'm just flicking on the top of my um my soundboard like this uh-huh. yeah I'm, I'm guessing like maybe any song where they use like the rim shot for the where the drums are yeah, using yeah. a rim rim shot yeah um, or uh, instead maybe, of the snare, because like anything the, like that, yeah, you can we can plug that in wherever. Yeah, know? like or, I would use the the chunk to replace any time that the drums are using a regular <laughs> snare. Yeah, yeah, and then maybe like that golpe if they're using the rim shot. Mm. You know, I mean, but like, uh, yeah, the and kind of the only way to find out where it works and where it doesn't. Mm-hmm. is to use it everywhere right like <laughs> just, if, try. <laughs> just yeah, try even if it any song that you'd already know yeah even if it doesn't have those hits or stuff it's like yeah just try it and then if it works it works yeah if it doesn't then it doesn't like you i, I think 
and maybe you might say like oh i really like it here and other mm-hmm. people won't so that's just your personal taste yeah. you gotta take that into account I was going to say that I had something recently that's kind of like that where I just learned how to do like campanellas and I was just campanelling everything. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the same, same exactly. I'm like, oh, how do I play this? And, oh man, it's like maybe do this song campanella. And then like, I, I was like, okay, n- enough with this obsession. But I'm like, all right, chocolate fontaines. I added one campanella in there where it fits, you know, yeah. like, and yeah. I now know like when and where to use it. But you know, when I first learned it, I'm like, this is so cool. I'm going to add it to everything. <laughs> but really context. <laughs> And then, yeah, and then mm-hmm. from that, you'll learn like when it's useful and yeah. when it's appropriate and mm-hmm. when it doesn't really add anything to it. Yeah. Try um, if, if you're looking for a song still, um, Islands in the Sun, like like I just played, maybe um, Love Song by, by The Cure. So, <laughs> I don't do it e- enough. <laughs> there, <laughs> I want that, that hit. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, don't try those two. Um, just to, I, just to start. Yeah, I, I think if you listen to songs, you'll hear mm-hmm. where there's accents, and mm-hmm. then just try and like change that accent uh, mm-hmm. beat to that knock. You know, that yeah, cause, yeah that a knock is knock. pretty much an accent is to get yeah. your attention right like so yeah i, I hope that's that. what she's talking about if she's talking about the chunk and stuff then pretty much any song like <laughs> down down up up down up we, we, we overuse the chunk the chunk yeah but. we i don't know if you guys noticed it, i mean the audience but i have not added a chunk in a while unless it was like a kyle creator boy song uh-huh. and stuff and even then like i have not done chunks in a while because like i felt like i was abusing that power for a, for a long time and i was yeah. maybe getting kind of tired of the how do you do that thing or whatever like, was, you know this video, I, I had that video on like almost on speed dial so to speak <laughs> I was like, here you go chunk or whatever yeah. and because everyone kind of does it became like a thing They're like oh how to chuck and people get like you know everyone's using it now and so it's kind of lost its it's cool. It's a cool factor. I was cool when <laughs> I was do. I was chunking before. It's cool, Kahai. <laughs> yeah. We were. I said we were chunking before. It was cool. Yeah. Now, that's not cool. Not cool anymore. So it's like now nah, we we rarely chunk now. <laughs> are are we are we ukulele boomers? Yeah, are, are I think so. In the boomers in the <laughs> I think so. We're we're um, the uh, you know we're the old guard as Cynthia Lynn called us <laughs> of, yeah. of ukulele lessons. That, Shout out to Cynthia. We that's you. a nice way. Of saying it. <laughs> it was a really nice way of saying we we're pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys have been around for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, next question. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, let me. I don't think we have a next question, but th- no. it kind of reminded me that talk about the Knox reminded me of somebody who said <laughs> playing cards. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, so it, it's kind of funny because somebody asked me where they should go, mm-hmm. and in particular, they said they don't want to learn bends or they don't want to use bends. Yeah, and it's kind of weird to me, like to say that you don't, you like actively don't want to use a technique because yeah. techniques are just there for a purpose Mm -hmm. you know and you can choose Mm -hmm. whether to use it or not but i mean they they all have a different purpose to serve so it's you know what if they were what if they were bullied you know like as as a kid with bends you're like i don't want to do bends anymore you know they're (laughs) i (laughs) they're very mean (laughs) they were like thrown in the it's like Cinderella. They were thrown in the basement <laughs> at, with the ukulele and told, "You gotta okay. just bend that string for all day before you come up and you can get your soup, right?" And like, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, there's, you know, like it, it's not wrong necessarily. It's just weird right. to hear like that somebody's like, "I don't want to use this technique," you know? Yeah, well, you know, for some people, maybe like for their ears, you know, in all seriousness, maybe it just doesn't um, sound pleasing or whatever. You know what I mean? Like everyone's ear is going to be different. Yeah. Um, same thing with that saying, one man's medicine is another man's poison. So maybe for them, it's just maybe just the thought of like taking a note and, you know, and maybe just from here to here, right? So we got these two notes. Those are pleasing. But anything in between, 
is not as pleasing. So I, I get it. I get it. it it's was, it's it an was, aesthetic thing, maybe, you know? It was interesting because uh, it sounded like, too, they were getting that mixed up with mm -hmm. uh, soloing, too. Or maybe, yeah. Because yeah. they, they also said, I want to learn how to, I want to get better at picking, but I don't want to solo. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like it's almost like, I yeah, I, I don't know. Like, uh, it, yeah, it seems like you're trying to isolate certain things, mm -hmm. but really, it's not mm -hmm. uh, necessarily. You don't have to cut yourself off from it, right? Yeah, and because like I gave them mm. the example of uh, "Wonderful Tonight," mm. and yeah, and I said like, if you really want to, you can use a slide in place of that, because yeah. all you're trying to do is get it to go up a little bit right get the note to bend up a little bit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but at the same time like if you take that away from wonderful tonight mm -hmm. like i can't imagine that's it song. That's song. Yeah, yeah it's it's not as expressive right like yeah. you really can't get that that deep mm -hmm. emotion from it so uh it's it's fine to say i don't want to learn this right now but mm -hmm. i would say like if you know you think that way about a technique don't mm -hmm. cross off that technique forever right yeah like yeah yeah so you never know it's just it's like saying i'm never gonna use screwdrivers or whatever yeah. you know what i mean like uh, you know, <laughs> i only want to use nails <laughs> you, <laughs> you may you may <laughs> you may need it one day it's, yeah. it's kind of like that like or, that's maybe what god is saying like, yeah i don't hate wrenches it's <laughs> I like i want to use a wrench ever it's like you're a carpenter mm -hmm. and you're like i gotta nail in all these things but i hate a hammer so I'm gonna use a screwdriver and smash it against yeah. the, the nail you can. You just can. to get in. Yeah, it works. But <laughs> I mean, like everybody's kind of gonna be looking at you, right, and being like, "Uh, you you want to use my hammer? <laughs> like, yeah. my hammer is pretty good. Yeah. Just gotta tap it a little bit." So, yeah, I wonder right. where that comes from. Where like, where, <laughs> why would? Why they were so against it? I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. And I I just offered that like you can mm. do this instead, but um, I wouldn't write it off completely. You yeah. know. That's good. That's good. You gave good advice. Um, let's talk about the um, the contest, not contest, but the uh, the songwriting challenge. Okay, so the songwriting challenge we got uh, three entries in, which is uh, Rob, the one you heard, you guys heard earlier. Or did we have more entries? Yeah, I saw uh, three. Yeah, we had yeah. Uh, Hamsini and then Chris and Sue. Yeah, so um, Rob, you guys heard uh, at the beginning of the show, uh, Hamsini. Um, once again, very really cool melody line, you know that she was she was doing there, and I like once again repetition, like repeat that melody line to me so I can remember it, and I remember it, and it's it, it works, you know. But it's not like she just had that same thing over and over. She you know she went to different places, but came back to it every now and then just to kind of remind the audience um, what what it is, and I, I dug it, I dug it a lot. Um, Chris and Sue really cool it's like uh it's a very mysterious sound you know? like, I, I dig it i dig it a lot the sound quality was choice i like the sound quality of chris and sue's um and en entry this time around and they said that they used something new right yeah they're they, using their like they like, updated audio their yeah. interface yeah. oh fancy schmatz pinky up chris <laughs> and sue pinky up when you drink your champagne yeah <laughs> um no it was, it was cool I, I dig it i dig it a lot um but make sure because it's the two of you you know um make sure that you're kind of moving together i think that's my um you know my my only advice is um is to practice moving together and that's that means exactly what it means like uh you you can't have like one person doing the thing and then the other person doing their own thing and um and it's like we'll just meet in the middle or whatever. Like no, you kind you guys kind of have to walk together. You know, like um, Chris is doing like maybe the the strumming or the picking. I don't know who's doing what because it's just I think, audio. I didn't see the. Um, yeah, I think Chris is doing the picking and Sue yeah. is playing the background chords. Yeah. So um, if if Chris is doing the uh, the, the the picking, uh, Sue has to kind of walk alongside Chris to uh, you know to kind of get the get the oh, melody I'm line sorry. to move it's the uh, other, way, other around. way around okay 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 so yeah whatever whatever it may be like if if uh, sue's doing the melody chris has to be there to walk alongside her kind of like me and oh, aaron when we play it, it might have been weren't they the ones that had the question about audio drift when they're recording mm. well they they actually said they that, record together right uh, yeah and they, they said that with their new interface and their yeah. new setup yeah it fixed that nice. so yeah. they don't have to worry about so that. it did sound a lot better you know but um i think that's where you guys can improve the most is just really start to kind of move together you know and um and groove 
I think know, find each other's groove. I think that's that's yeah. very really important. I think there's there's parts of where they are moving together, mm-hmm. and in those parts, you can hear that Sue is like picking, and her picking goes like in between uh, Chris's like yeah. strumming. Yeah. But then there's parts where like Chris is strumming, and the strumming is almost mm-hmm. more. Um, kind of like in your face yeah than the picking mm-hmm. itself yeah so that's where like uh when you guys play together right like uh, aaron does a lot of like hitting that bass note with his thumb and then just kind of like filling in the space with the rest mm. of his fingers you know yeah. that kind of strumming instead of doing the like exact like you know down up down up chunk up down yeah. like because when you do that like it kind of detracts from you know if the person is playing uh picking a melody mm-hmm. It might be harder to hear so yeah there, i mean it, it'll come like consider. more practice though i think you know i think just the more they play together the more <laughs> they're gonna find each other's groove because right yeah. now i think you know and plus because they just wrote it i'm sure the song is kind of new they don't have too much confidence in it yet but once you get to know the song the arrangement and um once you guys start kind of listening to each other and following each other the the person backing up doing the um doing the rhythm pattern should really listen to the person doing the melody line because the melody line is a lot more free than the uh than the rhythm is the rhythm kind of has to almost follow the uh, the melody and i'm not saying the melody line shouldn't follow the rhythm guy because they definitely should you know mm-hmm. but because the melody line should be on top if that melody person rushes or slows down, that rhythm person has to be there with them. And that's what I mean by walking together or by going together, you know, and moving together. That's what I mean. If one, you know, and I'm not saying don't speed up or don't slow down. It's just that if one does, then the other one has to go along with that one. Yeah. It, I think it, so. It sounded like, for an analogy, it mm-hmm. sounded like. Chris is the one who's doing the strumming, right? Mm-hmm. So he he's like the one setting the pace with yes. the, a jump rope. Yeah. And it sounded like Sue was just like waiting and then she's like, oh, I'm jumping in now. Yeah. I'm jumping, I'm yeah. jumping, I'm jumping, I'm jumping out. Where it's kind of like you, if you're the one setting the strumming, mm-hmm. like instead you have to like watch, you're like watching, okay, they're jumping. I have to move my rope under their feet yeah. now, 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 yeah. now. Watch the feet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watch them. Yeah, that's oh. just move together, and and um, it's not something that is just going to be fixed overnight or whatever. I think it's mm-hmm. it's something that you guys will you know learn as you play more together. Like that, mm-hmm. it's just going to be that. Like when Aaron and I, as as good as we are, uh, separate, it took a it took at least like a year, two years for us to really like start to kind of feel each other's groove. You know, because my groove uh, is a lot different from the groove that you're used to. You know what I mean? Oh well, yeah. When we started, right? When we start, I would say maybe like five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so don't feel around <laughs> around the five year mark. I started getting a little more comfortable. <laughs> like up until that, I was like on edge the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron used to have like the cords on the floor and yeah. stuff, and he was he was a very nervous wreck back then. I was trying to because he was just hold kind of, it together. <laughs> you were the square peg that was put in that round hole, like that was. Four in that round hole hey, guitar hey, player start yeah <laughs> okay yeah. um moving on thank you so much for all the submissions let's pick a winner yeah shall we from those three people one person is going to get a third lesson so here we go spin that wheel wheel smiths coming right around to uh show us how it's done looks like kristen sue is gonna get their third lesson i don't think they use their last one so there could be a month where i'm gonna see chris and sue like four times <laughs> right on, congratulations all right now that we have that uh we might use your song one of these uh you know one of these openings just like how we use rob's this this um this episode now I've been staring at these because I just ate a really salty burrito before we started <laughs> filming. That's why I'm sorry because I'm like low key, like burping, and I'm pretty sure it's not that low key because my microphone's right here. <laughs> I just had a really huge burrito from Chicken in a Barrel. Now, I know that sounds really weird, a place called Chicken in a Barrel, but trust me, it's good stuff. Good. It's good. Right, Kahai? You've had Chicken in a Barrel before, right? Yeah, a few times. How, how would you, how would you uh, describe Chicken in a Barrel? It might be the. <laughs> 
Uh, it might be the one of the best barbecue places on Kauai, and, <laughs> and unfortunately, we do not have a lot of barbecue places. So that uh, is barbecue kinda... in <laughs> or garden yeah. out of barbecue. It's not, yeah, that's yeah. not Southern style barbecue or I... Mexico. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> it's good stuff. They basically use barrels to smoke the uh, the, the meat, right? Mm-hmm. Like when, when yeah. they cook it. Just don't. If you come from the mainland, like don't compare it to barbecue you've had. Probably, yeah. <laughs> just you know, like give us this one. <laughs> just, it is what it is. Just let it go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like how when we go to the mainland, we just let let all the poke places go. You <laughs> yeah. know, like we just we yeah. let it go. We let yeah. it go, and then we talk about when we get back home. But we're not talking about it when we're there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Good place. I I dig it, and um, it's kind of like this Mexico thing going on with that with with that. And I had a huge chicken in a barrel chicken burrito. So anyway, um, I've been staring at this because uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of salt in my body. So these are from our good friend Kevin Bay. Am I yeah. correct? Go ahead. All right, Kevin so, and his wife. Yeah, Kevin Shirley. and his wife, the Bays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's my Bay now. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you are now my babe because you know the way to get to my heart. Um, we have these amazing gifts. So I'm going to show the three boxes of things that are in front of me. And then I'm going to show the thing underneath it. Is that cool? Yeah. So Kevin's bought, brought us a bunch of stuff. The first stuff. Coming into frame. Moon pies. <laughs> mini moon pies. So, you know, you don't, you don't feel too bad eating one. You know what I mean? It's, it's a mini. So you only feel mini bad. <laughs> uh, I love this. You know? <laughs> mini bad about eating the entire box. <laughs> so, uh, mini moon pies. I, I love these. And these are, these are classic. You know, since 1917, I didn't know these were around like that, that long. But <laughs> yeah. in, they're basically like chocolate covered cookies with marshmallows in the middle like heart it, it's it's like a s'more like how yeah. are you hate on that you can't you can't hate yeah. on it it's awesome all right and not only so i said i did say he knew the way to my heart which is chocolate <laughs> <laughs> and then he opts it up with a mint chocolate <laughs> yeah. which come on come on now you're just showing off <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you're just you know just watch Aldrin yeah. just melt I, right I, off of that I, seat I guess <laughs> or just break the seat after, <laughs> yeah. after eating so much food yeah. um mint chocolates moon pies I didn't even know this existed this mm-hmm. is kind of like a um uh, what is that? Uh, that Thin Mints? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like Thin Mints. I'm guessing. I've never had As it. As a moon pie. As a moon pie. It's yeah. like a moon pie mint Thin Mint. So I, wow. This is, thank you. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, it's for the whole office. It's not just for me. <laughs> and then, just to show off even further, banana moon pies. <laughs> if there was... If there's one fruit <laughs> that, that was for El Green Guerrero <laughs> that deserves to be <laughs> in in my you know in my list, it's banana. My <laughs> my email like growing up was banana ketchup at you know at mm-hmm. whatever dot com. <laughs> <Da-da-da-da. Okay. laughs> but banana, come on, come on, Kevin. Does it mean did we just become best friends? <laughs> did we just did we just become best friends? Did, can uh, I be a bay? <laughs> I think, and then the other stuff too, because yeah. he sent a letter explaining everything. Yeah. So the other things, I think, will okay. even add more to that. I don't even know what the other stuff. Yeah, is, but Audrey just hasn't that seen so it so far. It's it's been kind of amazing. So there's this. I don't know what's in it. Okay. That's that's so the guys have seen it. And yeah. Like, we have, looking at my face, like my reactions. Seen it. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Whoa! 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 Whoa. That's so cool! This is a mini car. Pretty, pretty amazing. That's amazing. Did he make these? Uh, his wife. His made wife them. made them. Dude, that is so cool. That is so cool. And we got we got Aaron with his glasses. Yeah. Wow! Alright, <laughs> I'm gonna put this one down. And the guitar. I, I, I gotta be careful. Apparently it's with like with the guitar. It's like something oh. they do in Brazil and wow. she learned to make it while in Costa Rica. So, yeah. And then and then there's me. Oh, there's a little there's a little me. <laughs> oh, there's a little me. And I, oh, that is pretty amazing. That is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. 
Wow, thank you. I'm a, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just go a close up over here in this in this camera. Can we do that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you wow, I have cheeks. <laughs> Look at them cheeks. <laughs> and I got my hat. Uh, yeah. 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 That's the that's hat. that's the hat. Yeah, it's the uh <laughs> it's the Anaheim Ducks bear hat. <laughs> it's a California bear in the colors of the Anaheim Ducks. That's basically what my hat is. For those people who are wondering. Yeah, man, this is awesome. <laughs> Look at this. We all get one. That is that is too cool. That is way too cool. There. Oh. <laughs> Oh no, Aaron's glasses. <laughs> we'll, we'll fix that. <laughs> Amazing. Wow, that that is. I am so impressed right now. Oh, oh, jeez. This is so cool. Yeah. Ha. I want to tell Heather like, did anyone make a doll you know, <laughs> for you? That is for your you. likeness. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Ah, and there's other things in here too. Okay, I'm up. I'm gonna put these down gently, gently. Especially Aaron in his glasses. <laughs> All right, now um, ooh, pucker butt pepper company. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Hot so hot sauce. <laughs> hot <laughs> sauce. <laughs> so the he, Kevin wrote yeah. the moon pies are to help with the hot sauce. Ah, to tame it after. Yeah, tame your tongue after. Pucker butt. Pepper Company. Yeah. This uh, is the same company that makes uh, the... Yes, uh, scissors. I get pepper X and... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? From uh, Hot Ones. Yep. From Hot Ones. Okay. I'm going to put these down a little bit. Thank you so much, Kevin and Mrs. Bay. <laughs> yeah. You guys are now both my bays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry to the audio podcast listeners because... You got it. You got to watch the. Yeah. You got to watch the replay just to see how amazing these like these little dolls are. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Okay, so hey, this one. I was thinking like uh, we should just add it to the set, right? Like put yeah, them in the set. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, who's the, who's the guy that uh, Pepper X that uh Sean Evans, you're running Sean Evans, right? Uh, no, that's no, the guy no. From, uh... no, the guy that created oh, the pepper yeah. is the Yeah, the, that is Fucker Butt. Yeah, the I do, owner I do of Fucker Butt. Yeah, 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 yeah. His name I've is seen... uh, Smoking Ed Curry. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen like a, a like a documentary or like a video with him and stuff, and he yeah. goes around his garden and just like picks it and he eats can it just like eat nothing. Them, yeah. Like, holy cow. Most people have a hard time just touching them. All right. Th those peppers. What? This one is called. Hot sauce voodoo prince death mamba. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <Okay>. Uh, <laughs> Aww. Try try open the other one and yeah. I'll explain the two sauces. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so this one. I like all those words. <laughs> <laughs> Hot sauce death mamba voodoo prince. Like that's, that just screams all sorts of no's for other people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like okay. so earlier in the week, uh, Kevin was like emailed me. He's like, "Oh, hey, I want to send you guys something." Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, awesome!" And I just thought it was gonna be like a small box. Yeah, and it, it all this stuff came in like a huge box, like wrapped up and everything. So yeah, that's yep. amazing. All right, this one is I like that though, so that because if it spills, it goes all over the dolls and stuff. So like, <laughs> Whoa, this is. Reaper XXX squeezins. Are we gonna have to do another one of those episodes? And is this the episode that I'm actually gonna just like have smoke coming out of my ears? You know? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> you guys want to try this with me? Yeah, uh, sure. Kevin okay. like wrote a tired note, and then in okay, the note, cool. it what says, does it say? Uh, well, about the hot sauce, it says mm -hmm. um. Uh, he created or Ed Curry, creator of the Carolina Reaper. It's <laughs> uh, signed. Which yeah, which holds the Guinness World <sighs> Record as the hottest uh, pepper, yeah. average of one point six million up to two point two. Uh, the Reaper Squeezins is their hottest sauce, made with ninety two percent Carolina Reaper peppers. <laughs> the Reaper Squeezin we sent to you is a limited edition, fifty percent hotter <laughs> bottle signed by Smokin' Ed himself. Uh, Amazing. The Voodoo Prince mm -hmm. Death Mamba is a much tamer and flavorful sauce, still mm -hmm. hot, 
made with black pepper, ghost peppers, onion, garlic, and cumin. That sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah. So one is just hot for no reason, and then one of uh, one just... of them had some flavor, but it's still hot. Yeah. So this is, I think, for next episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the hottest challenge that I'm probably gonna get. This is from Smoking Ed himself. Yeah. Oh my jeez, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> like I'm, I'm usually not scared of hot sauce challenges, but this one I'm legit scared for. <laughs> I don't know if I even want to touch Amazing. that one, you know? Yeah, no, we all got to try it. <laughs> I can't be the only one. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, gotta, you, can, you can tell this one's like, you know, it's got more like um, vinegar and water and stuff. Or yeah. this one is just, just a packed. chunk. Just, it's like so thick. I <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Kevin Bay, my new bay. He knows, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Knows the way to Aldrin's heart. I know. Jeez. Thank you so much. Toys? Chocolate? Hot sauce? <laughs> Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. yeah they... Ah. <laughs> Once again, here's the toys just to kind of show. Here's a little Kahai, little KFC Kahai. This is me. Amazingly accurate. Yeah. And this is Aaron with his hat. And his sun uh, and his glasses, not sunglasses, but his glasses. Where's the, where's our, our Lego minifigs? What yeah. if we like put them next to each other? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're up there. Yeah, they're, two. they're playing music in together. the set. Oh man. Let's let's make like a stop motion video. Right <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, I do have I do have an idea for mm -hmm. uh, opening a different opening, so maybe we can. Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, we, maybe, maybe. Ah, thank you so much, Kevin, for uh, for your amazing gifts. We really appreciate. It. We're probably gonna put it back there so you guys can see it every week on this show. Um, who knows? Next week maybe we'll do the hot sauce challenge, or I don't know. I might check it out. <laughs> who knows? I'm legit scared for uh, for those two sauces. But thank you so much, uh, everyone, for watching. We'll see you folks next time here on the Ukulele on the Ground podcast. Tune in tomorrow for Aloha Friday Live Jam and the uh, live coaching that happens right after. So if you need help with your ukulele, I will be live tomorrow at 2.15 to 20 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time here on Ukulele Underground for your uh, live coaching. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Aloha.